Sup, Nerd Migos, I'm the Jive Talking Nerd, John Norgrove. We've got Wife here. We're here for another review jive. It is wrestling time again. I don't know if I have a card for that already. I should get a card for that. Uh, <laughs> like maybe a title belt that says Nerd Jive in it. Oh, that's a great idea. Cool. Cool. The first day of my vacation is wasted on trying to build Love that making now. more work for that's you, babe. Awful. What's up? Yeah. Hey, you want to edit my videos? Fucking do that shit, man. This is It's exhausting. <laughs> Watching, understanding, and, and editing fucking six videos a week now. Technically seven um, because of uh, because we try to stay ahead of the curve a little bit. But uh, yeah, so... Uh, so we watched last, Payback yesterday last was night. Yesterday was Payback. Which is weird because this SummerSlam was literally a week last ago. Week. Yeah, it, this felt... It felt like Raw. It felt like they wanted yeah, to do it really an felt extra like, Raw. It felt like just a Raw Because Roman episode. Reigns wanted to do a match on a Sunday. Yeah. Like, that's exactly what this yeah. felt. This was, this, was, uh, this, was, this was WWE's 2020 pay-per-view brought to you because Roman Reigns wants it. And really, it's just an episode of Monday Night Raw. Uh, maybe? I, I, okay. This one was sort of like... Actually, this didn't even go for really like as long as Raw normally would. Yeah, because the this was the, from the four kickoff to was one match, and that was like fifteen minutes. Yeah, and then the pay per view itself went from four to six thirty ish. So I mean, I guess when you remove commercials, this is so, just like a teeny bit longer than maybe a than Raw. A raw. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's probably just basically a Raw. Okay, so couple of things. So, uh, we did watch the kickoff show. Yeah. The, or the pre-show, I should say. So, the kickoff match was Riot Squad and the Iconics. Yeah. But before they did that uh, match... Hold on, hold on. And Riot Squad defeated the Iconics. Yeah, but... But... Before that match happened... Before this match, they had your standard issue four announcers at a... Or, excuse me, five announcers at a table, because yeah. uh, the girl was in the middle. Um, yeah. What's her name? And, uh, so they had the announcers, and our truth walked in with papers and was just like, hey guys, I'm running a little bit late while they're, sh and then set them down. Yeah. While, while they're mid these motherfuckers talking about getting yeah. ready for this. For and then Slam, there's an or, for incredibly payback, I mean. awkward exchange between Charlie and R-Truth because they host uh, his, 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 his Monday the, thing. The raw after show, yeah. talk show they thing host that, that they together, do. And it was an incredibly awkward like five minutes or so of conversation between all of the different people at all the table. All the announcers and, and our truth. truth. And like JBL was getting irritated about it. And Booker T like, was very just irritated. like, I don't even Booker know, Booker T man. straight up just gave up trying to like communicate. With yeah, he the, just was like done. Because Truth, even truth no longer speaks the King's English, right? He's, <laughs> or the truth, Queen's English, truth, for that matter. Truth is uh, just like the mean, he's just memes I mean, come to he's life. He's really becoming like when he talks like very ultimate warrior. He's in the, the best character in WWE. So it right was now. really weird but it was because weird right afterwards they were like, "Let's go to a commercial break," and, and then, then they like were gone for commercial. like for like five seconds basically, yeah. and then they're like, "Here's the panning over shot of the arena that we're in." So it felt very much like, "Was that planned?" Or yeah. like, "Did that just happen when they were live and was, things were just weird?" It was weird like, because <laughs> the, like our truth was cracking jokes and they were kind of responding. This is what this. Okay, Okay, it felt like if this was planned, they planned that our truth was going to interrupt and relied on the fact that our truth is a creative genius yeah. when it comes to his character, <laughs> and then the rest of the announcers are just going to have to fumble around it. Yeah, and that's much. what happened. Or this was entirely unplanned, and our truth was legitimately a little confused. And both of those answers are exactly as likely because yeah. our truth is bananas in this and the announcers have no fucking clue how to deal with him <laughs> like at all they're like yeah. no, no no your thing's on monday that's not right now like what are you talking about and and truth is just like oh i don't know blah, blah, blah. and he's doing his thing where he's just like saying just words that have no yeah connection. he's just like it was very strange it, it was very but strange. it was maybe the funniest part was of this whole pay -per -view. probably the best if you can find the clip online absurd. Find the clip online yeah. of our truth doing that. Yeah, and just watch Booker T's face. Just watch Booker T give up. Just, <laughs> just, just like, he just like, like interact, die learn, inside a 
and then just it was quit crazy. being a part of stuff. Yeah. But so anyway, then it was then it was uh, Iconics versus Riot, Riot Squad. Squad. Um, I actually like all four of these chicks. I, yeah. I'm liking what they're doing with Riot Squad. I like the Iconics. It was a pretty good match. Um, I feel like. I feel like it was obvious that the Riot Squad was going to win simply because they're Especially because they had, right like, like just matching outfits. Together. They yeah. just got back together. They also had, like, a weird post-match, like, thing with the announcers yeah, on the kickoff. It's... They were like, Riot for, we riot for life. They're like, and... Riot for life, life for Riot. And we ah. were just like, what does that even yeah. mean? It was like a weird Three Musketeers, I mean, it was, but only two It was adorable kind of thing. because it was clear that they were happy to be back together as a team. Yeah. Uh, but it was weird because of the words that were coming out of their mouth. Yeah, Overall, great. kickoff was awkward. And this is why we usually miss the pre-show kickoff. Yeah, it was it was weird. Because it's weird it and it's weird. mostly a commercial which and the we're match see again felt anyway. Super jobby, so yeah. it whatever. Yeah. It was whatever. All right, so then after that was the US Championship match. I don't care about this. We're going to gloss over this real quick. It was Apollo Cruz Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley defeated Apollo Cruz uh and I don't care. Yeah. Uh, I understand that it's a title exchange, but right now the whole uh hurt business versus the other four black people in WWE. I, just, it, the whole thing feels like vaguely racist. Yeah, and it's, a it's very just weird. It's just dynamic. dumb VIP. And this is the thing it's MVP. MVP. I, dude, I get it wrong <laughs> every fucking time I say his name, I get it wrong. MVP, I feel like is better than this. Like, I feel like MVP is better on the mic than what they're giving him, but whatever. So that's whatever. Congratulations, Bobby Lashley. You have it for a couple of weeks until fucking Apollo Crews steals it or back. Something. Or some just, dumb shit, this dude. This is basically I don't know. the same care. match we've been watching for yeah. like a month and a half now. And not only am I just, sad that Apollo Crews lost his title, but I'm really over this hurt business thing, thing with, with MVP, MVP and Bobby Lashley. It's so dumb yeah. and it's so tired. Well, and they're dragging and other I wrestlers just, into it now. Like, f uh, yeah. fucking Ricochet is involved in this shit now. Yeah. And Ricochet is way better than this shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. It, whatever, dude. It's, yeah, this was it's a, dumb. I don't care. This was a dumb match with a dumb ending. Yeah, really, it just belittles the title. So, yeah. after that was Biggie and Sheamus, which was a fucking good match. This was a really good match. There, it was, there were multiple times in this match where you were just like, is Sheamus gonna win? Is Big E gonna yeah. win? Like, we had no clue who was gonna win. You know, uh, Big E really brought the fucking dynamite to the beginning yeah. of his solo career at the beginning of his solo career. Well, as it been, is. He's, yeah, he, he does been solo this, but before, like, but yeah. His new research, his new yeah. push. He, at yeah. the end there, when he like, he just like, fucking explodes Sheamus yeah. and then pins him the very, and then he's like, just like wow and he's just like was tearing his shirt off and it's just like wow yeah. well it's funny just, because like, you really out. like in, in New Day you kind of like were really focusing on like the happy upbeat Biggie, and you really kind of forgot like what a How powerhouse he is. Physically dominating he's Biggie, such is. a powerhouse. He's so good, yeah, yeah. So this so was the, a great match. It was match. a really good match. Yeah. Obviously, Biggie won. Uh, the, so then after this was King Corbin and Matt Riddle. And you know what? I cannot stand Matt Riddle. He's like a barefoot RVD, and I was never a fan of RVD either. Oh, is Matt so Riddle the like, barefoot kid? Yeah, Matt Riddle's Ugh. the barefoot guy. He's, he's like he's worst. like barefoot RVD or uh, Rob Van Dam. Plus Jason Mewes, and I cannot get behind him no matter what. Yeah. So I, like the, I was I like really the, like, looking forward to like Stoner King frat Corbin. bro thing. Yeah. But but they're presenting it in this like in this like fucking like rich kid with money sort of an attitude. Yeah. He's yeah. like he's like all of the he's all of the like douchebaggery no, of he's um, like... of what's his name from AEW the one with the scarf. Oh, um, um, uh, fucking whatever his MVP. name is. No, no, that's not MVP. <laughs> no, maybe it is VIP this time. I don't know. Whatever. Um, it, it's it's like he's like all the douchebaggery of that with a cool character trope that he's working within, but like none of the no, like no. fun stuff. What Matt he, he's Riddle not making is, any fun shit is Matt it. Riddle is that guy that you knew in high school whose parents were rich, but he was like a burnout stoner and didn't want to do college. No. And then after high school, he's like, I'm going to take a year and like backpack around the globe. And he like got as far as Southeast Asia. 
because that was like his first trip because he's like Thailand's so cheap uh, and then he just like stayed there and like I'm like like I'm learning Muay Thai it's so much better than all these other things yeah. and then he comes just, back just and then like he always about talks stuff. about his time in Thailand yeah. or wherever it or, 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 or wherever whatever it was, whatever it was depending on <laughs> that's your age who Matt range. Riddle is he's yeah. like he's like the parents are rich and they just let him be like a burnout stoner yeah. who like still works at like fucking Best Buy or something yeah but he so, doesn't need to but like his parents make him work a job you know it's just I feel like he has more potential cause uh, like when he's on the mic he can do a good job it's just being brought up I feel like this is an example of like bad writing great actor where like he could be doing better and he's not a bad wrestler the whole barefoot thing is dumb but what, whatever right they can use that and they can make it good if like that's if he's really like in on this or whatever but like it's just he's just a poorly written character yeah yeah like through and through yeah um uh and whatever about king corbin dude you know what yeah. i like him as the guy who portrays king corbin the wrestler he's <laughs> dope uh but king corbin the character is just like every time i see it i'm like oh yeah we're still doing this king corbin shit i mean he did I thought get, it was like, like six months ago. out on a thing which, which was like, kind of oh, dope that's cool yeah. that's right this is a pay-per-view i'm watching yeah. you know <laughs> barely yeah yeah barely. definitely barely uh but okay so then after that is the women's tag team champion which is bailey sasha nia jack Shayna uh baszler i love jacks i can't stand baszler uh, yeah, but, and I'm pretty over Bailey, and like, but I do like Sasha. So this yeah. was kind of a weird match to watch, but also like Sasha just just like lost her title, so now she's one belt Sasha and Bailey's two belts Banks. Yeah, and this was for the title. Yeah. and um, also the, they are either going to inevitably have Sasha and Bailey ex break up in a big explosion, yeah. or. I don't know. Somebody doesn't know how to fucking write properly. Because, like, they're being super sassy to each other and stuff. Uh, but, like, it's not... It's just being, like, ignored for now, which is weird. Yeah, I feel it's, like, like, very toxic, but, like, everybody's okay I feel like it. they're just dragging it out yeah. for longer than it needs to be dragged out. Um, I, I fucking love Nia Jax with a fiery passion that yeah. consumes my soul. Yeah. She's, like, one of my favorite female wrestlers. Yeah, she's a um, fantastic wrestler. She's fucking super she's dominating. She's overall good person. She's super badass. Uh, yeah. She's funny as fuck on the mic. Well, and she's her personality not is to hilarious. Like, yeah, and she's not trying to like get like fit a mold. You know, she's not trying yeah, she's to be just like doing her like thing. the blonde hair, you know? like big tittied wrestling girl. Yeah, like she's not trying to be that, and I super love that. Yeah, uh, because yeah, and it's she's rare not afraid that they to like that happen to now. it. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, so, uh, and and she's doing a really good job, and she's a fantastic wrestler, and she's good on the mic. Um, I think that it kind of sucks that they have her pair, uh, paired up with uh, Baszler. Baszler. Uh, because I cannot stand Baszler. Baszler's but also, they're like, we worst. hate each other, but we're going to do this match anyway. Yeah. And there are several long-reigning tag teams that really started this way. Yeah. So they could, you know, develop this may, further. This may, push. This I, may develop yeah. further. But, I, I mean, this match was an okay match, par for the course. It was pretty, pretty standard, whatever. Yeah. But... When they, when Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler won, the look on Nia Jax's face, the way that she was so excited about yeah, it, she was that made it for me. Childish she happy. She was, was great, childish dude. Childish happy. Yeah. Like she looked like she was gonna cry. She was in the zone. Like yeah, she no was so one happy. was happier about the outcome of this match than Nia Jax. Yeah. In fact, Shayna Baszler's over there on the mic trying to try to talk, and Nia Jax is just like wooing it up. Yeah, over which there is good. The title. Also, Shayna so Baszler is the really worst. Great. On the mic don't let her talk anymore yeah. give her give her some dude who who's give her a paul Heyman. yeah well paul no. Heyman give, could, give somebody better some to paul Heyman. um but uh like just give I her just more give Heyman. her a retired wrestler who can like help her out because she's really not great on the mic no um and her and she's like she's like trying to be hardcore badass threatening and it really comes off as her just being like a bitch to yeah wrestling to the wwe universe and not yeah. just to the person and she's trying there's to a fight. history of her making and, and there's a like history of anyway. her having uh, yeah. having disagreements with wwe and like disliking wrestling as a whole and i feel like that sort of toxic thought comes out in her in her stuff so yeah uh, i'm glad that nia Jax now holds a title I'm a little depressed that it's with Baszler. Yeah. But I'm glad that it took I would this rather two have belt it be shit like, away from like, Baszler. Like, dream tag team with Nia Jax would be like Nia Jax and Natalia. 
Yeah. I think that would be a really good I mean, great you know what? Nia Jax and Sasha Banks would be fucking banging. That would too. be really good too. Cause, cause, yeah. cause Sasha Banks is way better than they're making her wrestle right now. Also. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, so, yeah, that yeah. was interesting. That was good an interesting end, match. Mediocre match. Yeah. Uh, then we had Keith Lee and Randy Orton, and this was my favorite match of the night. Yeah, this was match I of the night, man. I fucking love Keith Lee so much. Yeah. He, the way he he talks like a super villain. Like, honest to God, Warner Brothers, or whoever the fuck, make this motherfucker a bad guy in a Superman or a Batman movie. Yeah. Like, I, I honestly But, like, think, a high-level bad guy. I think he like, could be... Like, make him um, Kingpin. Make yeah, him maybe, Lex Luthor. I think the he would be Lex Luthor. He would be talks. the perfect Lex yeah. Luthor. For for uh, the modern, because he's just he has this way of orating, and he's this huge presence, and you know and he's a big guy, but like he's a, he's this very larger than life presence. The way he like interrupts people, he's not just like, hey, I'm gonna interrupt like everybody else does. Yeah, he's just like, oh, I see that you've decided to ask me a question, and they're just like, yeah. we're not talking to you. And he's like, anyway, let me, and then he's yeah. just like reaching across and taking stuff. Yeah, he's it, great. It's very he's also it's very old school. Dominator the way Randy that he Orton. does that. Yeah. Holy shit, and it yeah. was so. Good. Good. So obviously he won Randy Orton. Yeah, lost and by you know what? Pitch. Best best moment of the entire night was Keith Lee after he won the match. Like oh it God. brought like it's making me a little choked up right now. Yeah, like dude, it, it brought, brought like, tears, tears to, his to eyes. my to my eyes. It brought tears to his eyes, and I'm so excited that he's finally getting a push. He absolutely deserves it. He is yeah. a world class human. He is a world class wrestler, yeah. and he deserves so. so so much, and yeah. I'm so happy that they had him win this match. Because if Orton had won this match, I was going to be like, "Well, I guess they're not really going to push him. They're yeah. just bringing. They're him just to using him, Orton which is something. which is bullshit. Uh, yeah. You know what? He's he's such a great wrestler on the, on the mic. He's such a great wrestler in the mat. He's he's very dynamic in the way that he wrestles. He's a mm -hmm. big guy, but much like Big E, he has very he has the, the, the agility and the physicality and when he when he throws, he throws someone. When he makes a move, he makes them move. Everything he does is sold to the fucking nines. Yeah. He's so good. And honestly he deserves his his fucking I mean, he, he deserves, deserves a title, a shot. title shot, man. He, I honestly, don't want to see this guy. I would love headline. to see Keith Lee V um uh, uh, the the um, what's his name? Braun Strowman. McIntyre. McIntyre. Drew McIntyre. Drew yeah, McIntyre. that would be a really Keith good Lee fight. McIntyre would be because I feel like we're, we've been underutilizing McIntyre because he's Absolutely. he's really stronger than they're making him. Yeah. They're allowing him to wrestle because he's wrestling smaller guys. He's wrestling yeah. Randy Orton. He would fucking throw Randy Orton like a rag doll. Yeah. Uh, but I think him versus Keith Lee could really show some like big physicality. Yeah. You know, yeah. taking it back to the old days. But Absolutely. So, so this was match of the night for sure. Yeah, it was match of the night. After this was Ray, Ray Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio versus Seth Rollins and Murphy. I'm going to be honest with you, I blacked out for this match. I'm pretty tired of watching uh, Ray, Ray and Mysterio Dominic defeated and Rollins and Murphy and I don't care. Yeah. Uh, so we're just going to move past that. I don't, this is yeah. a dumb fucking plot. <laughs> I don't care. So then after that was Universal Championship. This was the big one and this was the Fiend Bray Wyatt versus Braun Strowman versus <laughs> Roman Reigns. Yeah. Uh, uh, and this was a good match. It was a good match until Roman Reigns showed up. Well, it was a good match, <laughs> and they broke the ring. Yeah. Which is really cool. Obviously, it was planned because yeah. they didn't have any of the LEDs on the ring posts, so whenever you see that, you know something big's going to happen. Yeah. Well, um, and it's the big guys, and they're doing this, and the big dogs coming out. It's... Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I don't uh, but care. But the... So... So Bray Wyatt had the title at the beginning of this match and the ring broke and it kind of like stalled the match into this weird lull and then Roman Reigns runs out with Paul Heyman and signs the contract and goes down yeah. and then and basically after wins the, the title. match has like, done been like, happening. Like a ghetto money in the bank. I do not like this angle. It was a hot trash Reigns. money in the bank thing. You you're totally right cuz it yeah. was like it was, there this whole there was this whole build up of like are they going to get Reigns to sign Reigns to sign the stuff and he was what Whatever, about signing the contract or yeah. whatever and then and then uh uh Strowman and the Fiend show up and they're fucking doing their thing and it's a big match and that part of the match was good yeah they are good fucking wrestlers yeah especially wrestling each other they, yeah. they it's it's it feels like a very like angry like bad guy kind of fight like two guys that are willing to like 
take the risk, yeah. as it were. Yeah. Um, well, and so it feels it was really like, good. It feels well, like a, two people like who arch, work together. Yeah, it fighting. feels like arch enemies. It feels yeah. like best friends fighting, but not fighting as best friends, fighting because they're no longer best yeah, friends. Yeah, because they once were, and each of them thinks the other one betrayed them, kind of a situation. Yeah. But so, like, that part of the match was really good, and then they break the ring, and then it's like Roman Reigns stuff. He comes running out. They're like, he signed the contract. And then it's just like he does like one whatever Superman punch yeah. or whatever the fuck. And then, and then he and takes then, the title and then from wins Bray. the title. And it's just like, first of all, that's chicken shit. He wasn't there from the beginning of the battle. Well, first of all, Bray Wyatt just won that title last week at SummerSlam. Yeah, which is so... also bullshit that they're immediately taking it away from him. Yeah. I mean, honest to God, this whole pay-per-view... And because of the way this fight went, this whole pay-per-view, this whole fight, the whole Braun Strowman, Bray Wyatt thing that has something to do with, um, with, uh, uh, bloody... Oh, with Alexa Bliss? With Alexa Bliss. Yeah. And I, I don't know, know what the more fuck about that's that, all about. But that had like, nothing that, to do with That payment. had nothing to do with tonight, but, but with, with, the, with the pay-per-view. But it's like, it felt like this whole setup was for, was to give, um, to was give Was to give him, Roman Reigns the title yeah, back. To give Roman Reigns the title back in a pay-per-view event for no reason other than because Roman Reigns wants the title or because he's back. And to be fucking frank with you, I don't think he's a good enough wrestler to deserve it right now. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because we, we haven't seen... He's back. We haven't seen him do much of shit. Yeah. He's right? basically... To me, it feels like Roman Reigns is pulling a Brock Lesnar. Where he's like, you're paying me for well, this many... Well, he does many, have Paul Heyman. Yeah. The, you're paying me for this many things, so I want the title at, the, at a pay-per-view, and I want it around this time. And Roman Reigns has been gone for a while because of coronavirus. He's been concerned because he does have pre-existing conditions. Yeah. This is no hate on that, because Roman Reigns is a fantastic person, and... Yeah, he's a good person. Like, strong I, have, I have no like issue with Roman Reigns over, as a person. That, I have an issue I, with him as do the not character they have written that. for him, the big dog or whatever, which is fucking is a bullshit character. All right, it's non-evolutionary. And to yeah. be completely frank, all they've done is they went from one big dumbass with what looks like a penis tattooed on his chest to a different big dumbass. Yeah, and that's it. And and the only re honest to god, the only thing that gives me any semblance of hope is that Paul Heyman's involved, and Paul Heyman is a fucking gift from God. Yeah, I love Paul Heyman, right? so I'll watch him do anything. So, I'll, so but... I'll watch that, but just, like, get Roman, like, like either either have Roman work his way back up to the top the right way, yeah. all right, or have Roman come in big and, 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 and suffer some losses, but then earn his fucking title back or some bullshit yeah. like that, all right, or give him a new character or something. But this just, like, he shows back up and all of a sudden he's the best again. It, yeah, it, and they just it hand him a title. It cheapens the title, it cheapens WWE, and frankly, it's disrespectful to The Fiend and, well, and to Braun Strowman, who are both cheapens, fantastic fucking wrestlers. Yeah, well, it also cheapens, and it also uh, degrades the value of money in the bank. Because who has men's money in the bank right now? Otis. He hasn't done anything with it. So big. So Roman Reigns just comes back, and they just big dog give him a money in the bank thing without Style him attack. doing any of that work. Yeah. Meanwhile, they're not doing anything at all with Otis. Well, so the, well, what are you guys see, what doing? What I'm afraid is that they're going to have Otis use the money in the bank and then not have the title turned over to him. Yeah. Even though, again, he's one of these guys that deserves a fuck who deserves a title. He's yeah. more than fucking good enough. But they're giving these titles to just shitty stories. Yeah. yeah. And and if this is, I mean, I, you know what? Like this very much so feels like Vince getting his grubby little hands in shit and and making things worse. Yeah. Yeah, that's, also, that's this don't do like. a pay per view a week after a pay per view that cheapens everything in both pay per views. Yeah, yeah. This honest to god, this pay per view was was kind of shit. Yeah. Um. You know what? Uh. Obviously, the Big E match was great. Obviously, uh, the seeing Keith the Fiend Lee match was, was great. Good. Keith Lee is great. Braun Strowman is great. Yeah. Um. Uh, but this wasn't yeah, a pay per view. Honestly, the Callum. iconics and the others were good. Yeah. And our truth should probably seek some help. But um, <laughs> this this wasn't a pay per view caliber. Uh, event and yeah. and I and that's a little bit of a letdown. But you know what? We're we, we've been waxing on about this for a while. What do you think? What was your match of the night? Uh, what do you think of um, of the way that they're handling 
uh, Roman Reigns? What do you think about uh, Keith Lee? If you're a big Keith Lee fan, or if you don't like him, or if, you if you've never even seen any of his other stuff on NXT or anything, like let us know what do you think about Keith Lee since this might be the first time you saw him. Uh, if you're not a wrestling fan, what do you think about any of the things that we're talking about? Why are you listening this long? What are you doing? You watch wrestling. <laughs> um, but yeah, either way, we'll catch you guys for the next one. So I've been John Norgrove. This has been Wife. Don't forget to like this video, comment below, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that kind of stuff. Uh, yesterday was Payback, Payback, the WWE pay-per-view, and uh, this has been Review Jive, and we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna do other stuff now. <laughs> yeah, it was it was not great. <laughs>